The band's excesses were slowly destroying them, yet nothing slowed them down. And while on tour in Japan, their bad behavior resulted in an unexpected culture clash. They liked the bad publicity. The worse it got, the more happier they were. I mean, I was on a bullet train with them in Japan when um, Nicky was drunk and decided uh, he wanted to throw a bottle through the window of the train. And no one thought he'd do it. And I think Tommy dared him. Once again, just because we could, you know, I wonder what the sound of Jack Daniels' bottle sounds like smashing against the bullet train window. You know, it's just, it was just, what's it gonna be like? And it goes to the front and smashes the window and comes crashing down on these nice little Japanese people. You know, they're just coming home from work. The alcohol goes everywhere, glass goes everywhere, ruining people's suits. The, 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 uh, the, the businessmen are, you know, ah, 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 everyone's freaking out. About an hour and a half goes by, we pull into Tokyo Station, and as I look out the window, I see hundreds of these guys in riot stuff, you know, running towards the train. So I go, hey, Nikki, your fan club's here. Right? They handcuffed me. And all the fans there, I mean, it's like the Beatles, right? There's, you know, 5,000 kids there, and they're crying, you know, and it's like such a big deal. And Nikki's handcuffed and going to jail. And so I go, excuse, hold on, I'm the manager. They grab me, throw me to the ground, handcuff me, and then take me and Nikki. Because I'm the manager, I'm responsible. Nikki gets handcuffed, and I'm so ripped that I'm going, you know, I, I, you're not going by yourself, buddy. I'm going with you. Watch this. And I start a bunch of shit. Now, <laughs> as I'm laying there, Tommy Lee says to me, he goes, dude, I can't let you go by yourselves, you and Dickie. I'm gonna clock one, I'll go with the other. Pow! And goes and hits this policeman. Off they all go. I mean, that is what they were about. You know, absolutely fearless. They take me to um, jail. They call Mr. Udo. Doc McGee's sitting there. And I've got my sunglasses on and makeup's dripping out the bottom of the sunglasses and it's like, you know, 12 o'clock at night. I've got my boots up on the captain's desk, and he comes in, and I go, uh, if my balls were on your chin, where would my d be? <laughs> and he just looks at me like, are you insane? And I thought, oh, this is going to get bad, right? And because, you know, you're invincible, you're a rock band, you do anything you want. Those kind of stories would happen every single night. And Doc McGee's like looking at me like, I'm going to kill you. And I, he looks over at the, tra the other guy and says, D does he speak English? And he says, no. So I was like, 